How we doing, boys? 1000 Ways to Die was a show that ran on Spike TV, the home of none other than Mansers and Bar Rescue, from 2008 to 2012. Each episode featured a collection of unusual or odd ways that people had met their untimely ends, with a pre-episode warning to not attempt anything depicted in the show, insisting that all of the deaths were completely real. The show was canceled by the network in 2012 after the actors and staff organized a strike, which is incredibly unfortunate because even though the show is cheesy and poorly acted, it's still a lot of fun. But the claim of every death being real has been in my mind ever since I first watched this show in middle school. I haven't seen this show in easily 10 years, but I thought now would be as good a time as any to go through the deaths from the show and see if I could find whether they were fact or fiction. I decided to start with the only episode of this show that I had any slight recollection of, which turned out to be Season 6, Episode 1. There's a lot of ways to wind up dead. The fact that we survive it all is a miracle. Because every day we live, we face a thousand ways to die. The first segment we're going to be talking about involves a ferret legging competition at some sort of small town fair. Now you're probably asking yourself what the fuck ferret legging is. Ferret legging is a competition in which contestants shove live ferrets down their pants and see how long they can withstand the furry little bastards being in there. One particular contestant named Reggie is determined to break the world record, which to this day still sits at 5 hours and 26 minutes and was set by Reg Meller on July 5th, 1981 in Holmfirth, Yorkshire, England. The three contestants consist of Reggie and two other guys who don't end up being important because they drop out of the contest almost immediately. Reggie, on the other hand, lasts for several hours. Apparently, he has a trick to make the ferrets more docile by starving them out before they enter the contest. He stands on the stage for hours as the audience dwindles and he hopefully begins to question his life choices, like, why the fuck did I enter this competition to put live animals in my pants? Why did I think that this was the thing that would finally make Dad proud? and so forth. Reggie's attempt at eternal ferret pants glory eventually fails when an internal hemorrhoid bursts, causing the smell of blood to enter his trousers. This sends the ferrets into an absolute frenzy, and these ravenous little weasels soon burrow their way into Reggie's rectal cavity, painfully and horribly killing him. Oh yeah, we're already off to an absolutely batshit start. This is just the first death, too. I have like four more of these to go through. So, is this real? From what I can gather, no. But there is a grain of truth to it. See, in 1986, Reg Miller tried to break his own record and wanted to go for a full six hours with ferrets in his pants. A stage was built and an entire crowd of 2,600 spectators gathered to watch. Oh, and a quick little tidbit for what it's worth, Miller actually ensured that the ferrets were well fed, not starved, before competition. Eventually, after realizing that staring at a man with ferrets in his pants could only be entertaining for so long, the entire crowd eventually got bored and left. Contractors actually began began to tear the stage down while the show was still going on, and the whole experience left Meller pretty humiliated, and he retired from ferret legging soon after. So in the game of fact or fiction, 1000 Ways to Die Death number 780, Critter in the Shitter, fucking Christ, is fiction. This next segment is about a middle-aged gambling addict named Fred. Fred's getting drunk with some of his friends, and while walking by a playground, he bets that he can fit himself into one of the baby swings. His friends take him up on this offer, and after going back to his car to grab some lube, you know, like you usually keep in your glove box, Fred generously greases himself up and manages to squeeze himself into the swing, winning himself a hundred bucks. However, Fred is a large middle-aged man, and sitting in this swing is putting significant pressure on his abdomen. And what Fred doesn't know is that he has appendicitis. This pressure on his stomach, coupled with the fact that Fred already has acute appendicitis, causes his appendix to rupture. Fred's friends abandon him in in the swing and he's left to die as his ruptured appendix releases all of these potential toxins into his blood, which ends up slowly killing him. Like a lot of the deaths in this show, it's technically possible, but did this actually happen? Well, in October of 2011, about five months before this episode aired in March of 2012, a California man in his early 20s was left hanging in a child's swing for nine hours after betting his friends $100 that he could get into it. He slipped into the seat with the help of liquid laundry detergent and ended up getting abandoned by his friends after it became apparent that he was stuck. He was found at 6 a.m. the following morning by a groundskeeper, screaming for help and he had to be cut out of the swing by firefighters. The only thing dead being his ego and 
probably the entire lower half of his body, but he didn't die, which makes Way to Die number 141, Fat Man in a Little Swing, fiction. The next story is about a semi-pro lightweight women's boxer. She's climbed through the ranks incredibly quickly, knocking out dozens of opponents within seconds, earning herself the nickname Poundstone, like Paula Poundstone. Old Poundstone here has a match coming up, but she needs to drop 16 pounds in order to make weight. In order to drop this much weight this quickly, she severely dehydrates herself. When it comes time for her fight, the amount that she's dehydrated herself has caused her brain to shrink to the extent that it jostles substantially more within her skull whenever she gets hit, resulting in a brain bleed which causes her death in the ring. Now, for this one, I was actually able to dig up some decent information. In 2005, amateur boxer Becky Zerlentes was competing in a state championship match in Colorado. Becky was knocked out in the third round by her opponent Heather Schmitz, and after she didn't wake up, she was taken to a local hospital, where she was pronounced dead. Which makes A Thousand Ways to Die, death number 128, TK uh oh fact. Over here, we got a group of loser burnouts who spend all their time terrorizing neighborhood babies and being general nuisances and pains in the ass. One day, they go to the local playground and decide to use one of their motorcycles to make the merry-go-round go insanely fast. One of them gets launched off so fast that they go flying, landing on a rebar pole, which is then sent hurtling through their skull. And once again, I was able to find some information on this one. In 2004, a 16-year-old teenager was killed in Yuba County, California after her friend tied one end of a rope to a truck and the other end to a merry-go-round. The force of this acceleration sent her flying 70 feet, and she unfortunately hit her head as she landed and died from her injuries. This actually happened again in 2012 after this episode aired when a German stunt performer tried something similar with a BMW and was thrown about 20 feet. He broke his neck when he landed, and the police pursued manslaughter charges in both instances of these cases against the people who were driving the cars. These two instances are enough to make death number 16, out to launch, fact. This next death is some Scooby-Doo Arkham Asylum shit, bro. A greedy graveyard owner named Demetrius begins digging up dead bodies that nobody visits anymore to make room for more funeral plots. And to dispose of the bodies, he decides he's just gonna dissolve them in a fucking massive vat of acid. After trying to single-handedly dump a dead body into the vat, Demetrius falls in. He manages to escape, but he's already badly burned and on the verge of death. He makes it a few more feet before collapsing on the ground and dying. Only, of course, to return as Plasmus from Teen Titans, since I can only assume that this is his origin story. Now, after doing some research, I did manage to find a story about a man who fell into a vat of acid while working on a job site in 2005. And while he wasn't a greedy cemetery owner, he did unfortunately meet his untimely end after falling into... well, acid. Which means that we can give death number 613, that's all folks, the title of fact. Our next segment has a Philadelphia cheesesteak vendor named Dennis selling his sandwiches at an art fair. When all of a sudden a new guy sets up shop across the way, Dennis is obviously extremely upset by this and tries to talk very nicely to the gentleman first. That's actually a lie, he immediately tries to start a fight. Eventually Dennis sets off a pricing war, which escalates to the point where he decides to set this other guy's stand on fire with a Molotov cocktail. It's just a typical healthy business rivalry really. However, Dennis messes up his Molotov cocktail because he forgot to shake it, not to stir it, and ends up setting himself on fire. He runs full speed into a nearby tunnel, except he doesn't because the tunnel is 3D chalk art. Dennis slams his head onto the brick wall and dies after falling for Wile E. Coyote's oldest trick. Now as much as I would love for this one to be true, I just absolutely cannot dig up any kind of information on it. But if you happen to know something, please let me know because I would love to read more about this. There was a story I found and vaguely remember from 2016 about a guy who apparently fell for a painted tunnel and crashed his car into it, but Snopes is telling me that it's not actually true and it was just made up for social media clout, and also it happened four years after this episode aired. So it looks like death number 99, Tunnel Vision, is fiction. All right, guys, this last one is the one that I've really been waiting for. It's the only segment from this show that I vividly remember, and it scarred me for years. But before we do that, how about you do me a solid and hit that little subscribe button so you can see more of my silly little videos and also make your nightmares stop. Anyway, Zeke is a tattoo artist who's jealous of his cooler coworker, and also she has a split tongue, which makes her like extra punk rock. Zeke is also a douchebag. For example, after being asked to tattoo the word warrior, onto this guy's arm in Chinese, Zeke instead tattoos the word douchebag, except this guy is in a biker gang. 
remember that, because it'll be important in about 10 seconds. Zeke, in a desperate attempt to get the attention of the split-tongued woman he's madly in love with, shows up to work a few days later with a Teflon line chain running into his mouth, through his body, and out his ass. It's at this exact and unfortunate moment, as Zeke's co-workers are laying into him about how absolutely fucking insane this is- A chain running out of your butt into your mouth! Janus? gonna make me famous. Oh You've God. completely lost it. That the biker comes back because he has a friend that knows Chinese. And look, I, I shouldn't make assumptions, but once they told us this guy was in a biker game, I didn't exactly expect him to be in one that would uh, know or associate with Chinese people. But uh, hey, don't judge a book by its cover, I guess. You know, we're we're learning new things here. The biker chases Zeke out of the shop, but eventually he's able to shake him. However, the stack of pallets that Zeke's hiding behind are lifted by an unknowing forklift driver, snagging his chain and lifting him into the air, essentially by his entrails. The chain is pulled taut and it shreds through Zeke's organs, killing him. This is another one that just because of the sheer cosmic hilarity of it, I would love to be true, but like, just think about it. If this was true, everybody would know about it, right? Like it would be in a hundred more YouTube videos than just this one and in every single weird death video. Hugbees would be over there losing his goddamn mind. Furthermore, the logistics of swallowing this chain and having it pass through all 30 feet of your digestive tract without balling up or causing serious issues would be miraculous. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to put death number 985, uh, a chainus runs through it. Jesus Christ. Fiction. Guys, let me know what you thought of this one. We could make this a little series if it's something that you really enjoy. And if you feel I got any of these wrong, please feel free to let me know and leave a source because I'd love to get some more information on these deaths. My sources are actually listed in the description if you want to check them out. Give me a like, leave me a comment, and I will see you guys next time. My name is Isaiah, and thank you for watching my video.